So to pick up where we left off. Let's solve for T. See, we need to factor it. And because that 15 is there, it's going to be easier to use our uh, little trick where we find what A times C is. In this case, that would be a negative 30. And we're looking for two numbers. I'll call them P and Q that multiply to give you the same as A times C. And B here is negative 1. So we want our two numbers to add to give us a negative 1. So, let's see, can anybody think of two numbers? What's that? 5 and 6? Yeah, that ought to work. Um, a negative 6, positive 5. And multiply to give us negative 30. And they add to give us a negative 1. So, Uh, which one of these are we going to put first? I put the five first. And then the six second. Because the six and the two share a common factor. Whereas over here we can uh, factor out a five. So if we pull a five T out, we get a three T plus one. Over here, if we pull out a 2, we get another 3t plus 1. So we got a 5t and a negative 2, both being multiplied by a 3t plus 1. I have a question. Where did you get the 3t? 3t? Uh, 5 times 3 is 15. Oh, okay. And over here, the two times the three is six. Yeah. Makes sense. So, since this is equal to zero, if either one of these factors is equal to zero, their product is zero. So, either 5t minus 2 is zero. Or 3t plus 1 is 0. This one tells us that t would be 2 fifths. This one that t is a negative 1 third. So there's our two solutions. And again, we can always check our work. We can plug these numbers in for t up here and make sure that uh, you end up getting 0. I recommend on your exams, always check your work so you can get full credit. All right, this one here, uh, we want to set it equal to zero so that we can use the zero factor property. So we subtract six from both sides. All right. Um, I'll move this down here. Since we got a 12 here and there's no number we could factor out of everything, let's use our little trick again. 12 times negative 6 is a negative 72. B here is 1. So. Eight and nine? Yeah, that ought to work. Um, a negative eight and a positive nine, they add to give us one. Yeah, that'll work. So let's rewrite this x here as uh, what, nine x minus eight x. That way we could pull twos out of here and threes out of there. So we pull a three X 
That leaves us with 4x plus 3. We factor out a 2. Gives us a 4x plus 3. So we have a 3x minus 2, both being multiplied by a 4x plus 3. So if either one of these factors is 0, their product is 0. So either x is 2 thirds or x is negative 3 fourths. Let's see, I don't see any number we can factor out of all three of these, right? I think 23 there is prime. So we're going to factor this. we got to do our trick here. 7 times 6 is 42. Let's see, B is negative 23. All right, two numbers that multiply to give us 42, but add to give us a negative 23. Let's see, what about negative 21 and a negative 2? Those should work, yeah. Multiply to give us a positive 42, but add to give us a negative 23. So let's rewrite negative 23 here as a minus 21x minus 2x. That way we can pull 2s out of here and 7s out of here. So factoring out that 7x, we're going to have an x minus 3. We pull out a 2, we got an x minus 3 again. So we got a 7x minus 2, They're both being multiplied by an x minus 3. So either 7x minus 2 is 0, or an x minus 3 is 0. Which one tells us that x is 2 sevenths. And tells us that, that x is 3. So those are two solutions, and we can always test and make sure. Let's go ahead and check one. Let's plug a 3 in up here. 7 times 3 squared minus 23 times 3 plus 6. Let's see, 3 squared is 9. 9 times 7 is what? 50, 56? 63. So 9 times 7 is 63. And then 23 times 3 is 69 plus 6 equals 0. So worked out. And we can, of course, check the other one too. We wanted to. Yeah, this one we can factor out a, no, we can't. See, this is only divisible by five. So uh, let's go back to our trick here. Eight times C, six times four is 24. B is 25. So that's easy, right? 24 and 1. We multiply to give us 24 and add to give us 25. So we'll rewrite the 25x as 24x plus x. That way we could factor out the 6x here. We get an x plus 4. And we got an x plus 4 here. Y'all remember what to do here? 
Anybody tell me? Use the I. Well, you uh, need a one. This is just one times x plus four, right? So we have uh, one times x plus four, right? Here, let me take that back out of there. See, one, we got an x plus a four, right? That's exactly what we have up there. So you just want to explicitly write that one there. That way, you got a six x and a plus a one, both being multiplied by an x plus four. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, great. Yeah. So either six x plus one is zero, or x plus four is zero. So x is negative one sixth, or x is a negative four. Boom. Oh, look at all these fractions. Let's see. Nine sixteenth, right? This is three over four x squared minus one third squared, isn't it? All right, three squared is nine, four squared is 16. So this is the difference of two squares. Remember what you do with the difference of two squares? All right, a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. a squared minus b squared, ab and the minus ab cancel out. So this is a three x over four, three x over four, minus one third, plus one third. Makes sense, all right? We get our three squared, which is nine. X times X is our X squared. Four times four is our 16. The negative one third times a positive one third gives us our negative one ninth. And this and this are equal and opposite, so they cancel one another out. So either three X over four minus one third is zero or 3x over 4 plus 1 third is 0. This one tells us that 3x over 4 is 1 third. It tells us that x is 1 third times 4 thirds, which is 4 ninths. This one tells us that 3x over 4 is a negative 1 third or x is negative one third times four thirds or negative four ninths. All right, the other way we could have done this is add one ninth to both sides. We can multiply both sides by 16 and divide both sides by nine. So we have x squared is equal to uh, 16 over 81. Let's try that 81 again. And square root, absolute value of x is four ninths. So x is positive negative four ninths. Same solutions, different approach. All right, let's see, we're on number 25. Forgot what page we are on. 
page 144, I can remember that. All right, let's uh, take our quiz here. This is what quiz number 18? Yes. All right. Let's see, where was our last section of homework? I don't know if we've done this one or not. I don't think so. Y'all haven't done this problem, right? Not from this section? Nah, we're good with that one. And... Hmm. Oh, it's too wordy. It's too long. It's the old one. Go back to page 19. Hmm. <laughs> Let's check out some carrots here. All right, let's take, uh, see, it's 317. Let's take it till 335. Put you on the breakout groups. We have about 17 minutes to work these two. All right. Zoom our recording. So we have Apollo's Chariot is a roller coaster at Bush Gardens with a top speed of 117 kilometers per hour. Its initial and tallest descent can be modeled by h of t equals 52 minus 4.9 t squared, where h is in meters and t is in seconds. How long does it take to reach the bottom of the hill? Well, it's at the bottom of the hill when the height, which is given by this, is zero. All right? So when the height is zero, that's when it's at the bottom of the hill. So we set the height equal to zero. And now we solve for t. So we subtract 52 from both sides. Now we have t squared equals 52 over 4.9. So we take the square root of both sides. The absolute value of t. So let's see if we plug this into our calculator. Get us a nice pretty decimal, something we can round with. Um, get on here. Here's my calculator. So I need 52 divided by 4.9, and now square root that 3.26. So that tells us that T is positive or negative 3.26 seconds, right? Now we don't want the minus because we're not interested in negative time, right? It doesn't make any sense for time to be negative. So for this problem, we just want the positive one. Does that make sense? Yes. 
All right. Let's check out these carrots. Six pounds of carrots yield 20 cups of trimmed, gleaned, grated carrots. How many pounds of carrots are needed to obtain seven cups of trimmed, clean, grated carrots? Well, let's see. Six gives us 20, right? So how many gives us seven? There's our proportion. Six is the 20 as our X is the seven. All right, on the bottom we have cups of trimmed lean carrots on the bottom of each fraction. And then on the top, each one is pounds of original carrots. So if this is our um, our setup here, then X would be seven times six over 20, which is what, 42 over 20. Um, 42 divided by 20 is 2.1 pounds. All right. Questions? I multiplied each side by seven, so that's not correct. Uh, Okay, we're looking yeah. at cups. I'm sorry, I was I got them mixed. That's okay. Yeah, you're gonna multiply both sides by seven here. So you got the x equals seven times six over twenty, right? All right. Back to page 144. I think we just did 25. So we're on number 26 here. All right, we could use the square root method here. All right, they want us to use the zero factor property though so let's subtract one from both sides and what we can do here is just multiply both sides by a four that would give us x squared minus four is zero or x squared minus two squared is zero. So we can show it's the difference of two squares. Being the difference of two squares, these are our factors. So either x minus two is zero or x plus two is zero. So either x is two or x is negative two. Hold on one second, folks. All right. Of course, we could have gone the other route, right? We could have done, we just square rooted both sides, right? Now let's multiply both sides by four first. So we got x squared equals four square rooted. Absolute value of x square root of four is two. So x is positive negative two. Same answers, different approach. All right, page 145. Let's see what we can get out of this example here. Graph and identify the following characteristics for the function. All right, here's our g of x. A here is positive, so it opens upwards. 
our axis is symmetry, negative b over 2a, b here is 8, a is 2, so this is negative 8 over 4 is 2. So at x equals negative 2, here's our axis of symmetry. All right, so we know our vertex lies along that line. To find out how far up or down our vertex lies, we just need to plug in our negative 2 here into our function. So g of negative 2. See, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 16 is a negative 8. So we got to go down here. It's negative 8. There's our uh, vertex. Our y intercept, um, that's when our x is 0. Uh, yeah, when x is 0, that means we're lying on this line. So we plug in 0 for x. You can see we just get 0 back. So we know that's a point on our, our graph. Because this thing has an axis of symmetry, we know that this is also a point on our graph. So we already know what our x-intercepts are just from that trick there, all right? Or we could set this thing equal to zero and solve. If we we're gonna do that, we're gonna get, we could pull out a two x, and we'd have an x plus a 4. So either 2x is 0 or x plus 4 is 0. This one tells us x is 0. This one tells us x is negative 4, which is exactly where these are, negative 4 and 0. Okay, so... The domain, you see this guy looks like this. The domain is all real numbers. It goes infinitely far to the right and to the left, which again, we can write like this. The range is everything from negative eight on up. Range is y is greater than or equal to a negative eight. Any questions? See if we can figure out these word problems now. All right, the height h in feet of a small rocket t seconds after it is launched is given by this function. h of t is negative 16 t squared plus 128 t. How long is the rocket in the air? So um, basically, when, when this thing is zero, when the height is zero, that's when it lands, right? It's also when it takes off, right? So if we set this thing equal to zero and solve, let's see, we can see is 128 divisible by 16, 128 divided by 16. Yeah, it is, it's A. So, I can pull a negative 16 T out of this thing. I get a one, a T minus eight. All right, if I factor that, 16 times eight is 128. So our two solutions here, negative 16 T is zero or T minus eight is zero. This one says time zero. This one means time eight seconds. We'd expect these two times. At time zero, it hasn't launched yet, so it's still on the ground. At time eight, 
that's when it lands on the ground. So it's in the air for eight seconds. All right. When is the rocket 112 feet high? Well, here's the height. We set the height equal to 112 and solve for T. So we got negative 16 T squared is 128 T. We'll subtract 112 from both sides. So now in order to solve this, uh, we do the same trick here. Um, we can pull a negative 16 T out of this. Well, let's pull out a negative 16 for starters. That would give us T squared, then a minus eight T plus seven. See the negative 16 times the positive seven is going to give us a negative 112. Negative 16 times the negative 8 gives us a positive 128. So now we can divide both sides by negative 16. That goes away. So now we have to solve this thing. And we can factor it just eyeball by eyeballing it. We got a T and a T. Two numbers that multiply to give us seven, but add to give us eight would be a negative seven and a negative one. They multiply to give us seven. Negative seven T minus T gives us a negative eight T. So either the time is at one or at seven seconds. You can see just by looking here. If you plug a one in or a seven in. All right, one second and at seven seconds. Look at that in red. So it's at those two times is that at 112 feet. Makes sense. Here's your 112. So we're at one second and seven seconds. Total amount of time it's in the air was eight seconds. Questions? All right, page one forty six. Use the equation 3x squared plus 9x equals 0 to answer the following. Solve using the quadratic formula. Okay. Um, quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we got negative 9, all right, A is 3, B is 9, C is 0. So we have negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 9 squared minus 4 A C all over 2 A. We had negative nine over six plus or minus square root. This is zero. The square root of 81 over six. So negative nine sixths is negative three halves. Square root of 81 is nine. Let's leave this as sixth. All right. Square root 81 is nine. So minus nine six plus nine six is uh, zero. A negative nine six minus nine six would be a negative 
18 sixths, which is negative three. So zero and negative three. Solve using the zero factor property. All right, well, let's factor it. We could pull out a three X. That gives us an X plus three. So either three X is zero or X plus three is zero. This tells us X is zero. This one tells us X is negative three. Same solutions, different method. All right. Stu discussing the differences between A and B, which mode do you prefer and why? Well, B seemed to be a lot quicker than A, right? So you have simple problems with simple numbers. There's simple tricks you can do to keep the problem simple. The quadratic formula, however, always works. So even though we had ugly, ugly numbers there, the quadratic formula would still give us the correct answers. All right, let's spot the error and correct it. All right, this right here, this would be a 4x squared plus 48x plus a 36, All right? So when you have that four out there, you have to distribute it amongst the whole thing, right? So if you're gonna factor a four out of that, it would definitely not look like this. So these are not equal. Let's try again. Not equal. Finally, more homework, page 147. Solve using the zero factor property. There's going to be a lot of them. Got about 20 of them. And some word problems and some graphing. More word problems. All right, get to work on that homework. Hopefully, you've already done most of it. Uh, let's check out our concept review here. Quadratic equations and functions. Part A, solve 5x squared minus 45 equals zero. Three different ways using each of our three methods for solving quadratic equations. All right. Uh, the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. There's no b. C a is 5, c is a negative 45. So we have plus or minus the square root. All right, four times five times 45. Four times five times 45, 900 over 10. So the square root of 900. is 30, of course. So we got plus or minus 30 over 10, just plus or minus 3. So that's quadratic formula. Uh, we do this by factoring. 
we can factor out a 5. We got x squared minus 9 is 0. Divide both sides by 5. We can factor this as an x minus 3, x plus 3, because it's the difference of two squares. So either x is positive 3 or a negative 3 by setting each factor equal to 0. Or the square root method, right? Um, 5x squared. Add 45 to both sides. Divide both sides by 5. 45 over 5, which would be 9. So if x squared equals 9, take the square root. Absolute value of x equals 3. So x equals positive negative 3. Three different approaches the same problem. All right. By the time the final exam comes, y'all should be masters of all three of these approaches. See, it's four o'clock. Um, this class is long. So let's take a 10 minute break. Come back at a 410. Um, got number two here. All right, after a rocket is launched, it follows the flight path given by this function f of t equals negative 16t squared plus 9t. Find the, find the height from which the rocket was launched. So uh, if F gives the height, we need to find the height at time zero. So we plug a zero in. And we get zero back. So I'm going to assume that uh, F is in feet, so uh, the height at time zero is zero feet. The maximum height of the rocket, um, well, we need to find the vertex, right? See, A here is negative, which means it uh, opens downward. So that means our vertex is going to be at the highest point. So uh, the time when it's at its highest point is given by negative b over 2a. So that's going to be a negative 9 over 2 times negative 16, or 9 over 32, which... 9 divided by 32, which is at 0 0.28 seconds. So that's when it's at its maximum height. To find out what the maximum height actually is, we need to plug it into our function. So at negative 16 times 0 0.28 squared plus 9 times 0 0.28. So times 16, I got a negative 1.26 plus 2.52, excuse me, 1.26. It's not very high, right? 1.26 feet. That can't be right. Let me uh, let me check my work. Let's check our time again. Negative b over 2a. B is 9. A is 16. So we have 9 
divided by 32. Yeah, that's right. 0.28 seconds. If we plug it into our function, 0.28 times a 0.28. times 16 then, well it's not much of a rocket then huh 1.26 feet all right when the I guess this is one of those failed launches right all right yeah. when does when does the rocket hit the ground um, well if this is the flight path, or the height when the height is zero. So we pull a T out, we got negative 16 T plus nine equals zero. I just factored T out of this thing. So either at time zero or when negative 16 T plus nine is zero. Or when negative 16 T is negative nine. Or when T is nine over 16. Nine divided by 16 is 0.56 seconds. So yeah, this whole flight path this whole journey took a half a second, so yeah, not much of a rocket. All right, here's our rocket again. Negative 16 T squared plus nine. This one is a nine T. They're similar. The other one had a T right there, right? This one doesn't. So they're a little bit, bit different here. Find the y-intercept and describe what it represents in this problem. So here's our y-axis. When x is 0, or in this case it's t is 0, we'll find the y-intercept. So g of 0 would be, if we plug a zero in, we're left with nine, right? So up here at nine, that's our point. What does it represent? This start, it represents the height, the, the in, initial height. You know, before launch. All right, find the vertex. Well, the time part is given by this. So we got, there is no B here, right? All right, so that means our axis of symmetry lies right on the, the Y axis. And the vertex here is gonna be at G of zero. Plug the zero in, right? Which we already found is nine. That means is this guy looks like that, right? It means our initial height is the highest height, right? Initial height is maximum height. It means its launch is off a hill, basically. This thing's gonna look like that. All right, find the x-intercept. We set this dude equal to zero and solve. Got my squared, right? We got negative 16 t squared is a negative nine, or t squared equals nine over 16. Square rooting, absolute value t is three fourths. So t is three fourths. A second so right here this is three-fourths um, 
what does that mean? All right, the rocket was in the air for three quarters of a second. Questions about that? No. All right. The differences in our answers for problems two and three above in the context of time and height. Two and three, well, we saw that number two here is a nine T. Number three is just a nine, right? Um, number two here, if you plug a zero in, you get zero back. That means that this thing started off uh, right here at, at the started off on the ground and then went up and came back down. All right. Um, we found the rocket hit the ground um, at time zero and at 0.56 seconds, a half a second. So having that T there makes a difference not having a T here. See, without that T, when you plug zero in, you're still left with a nine. So that tells us that we started off at a height of nine. Okay. So whereas this, this one uh, opens downward, starts here at the origin. This one is like the other one, but it's shifted, right? So we're only looking at half of, of the graph. So that, that one little T makes a big difference, right? This one's all downhill. This one, we went up and back down. So here's an F and a G. Explain the difference between the equations F of X equals zero and G of X equals zero. All right. F of X. Try that again. Versus G of X. This is the difference of two squares, right? So is this one, but we'd have to have an I in here, right? The I times the I gives us a minus one that then cancels with that minus one to give us this plus. So this one is X plus nine times an x minus nine. This one is x plus nine i times an x minus nine i. Right? So this equation has real number solutions. This equation has imaginary solutions, right? This one says x is positive negative nine. This one says x is positive negative nine i. So on part B, how to find the solutions? Well, we just found them. We did the factoring, set them equal to zero, the zero factor property. Um, you could also use the square root uh, method. Uh, you can also use um, the quadratic formula. So can you use all three quadratic methods to solve g of x equals zero? That one? 
Yeah, I don't see why not. All right, we just did it this way. Uh, we did it with the square root method. We'd have that square root absolute value of x equals 9i. So x is positive negative 9i. If we did the quadratic formula, right, we'd have our negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a c all over 2 a so we have plus or minus the square root 81 times 4 right this is gone the square root of 4 here the square root of 4 is 2 as the twos go down we still got a minus in here though and the square root of negative 81 is 9. so we can do it all three use all three methods there's no reason why we can't Concept review, page 152. So, uh, first thing I want to do is multiply both sides by 6. So, 6 over 3 is 2x squared. Then, this 6 over 6 cancel. So, we got 35. On this side, 6 over 2 is. 3. Yeah, let's get rid of those fractions. So now if we put it in standard form, subtracting that 3x from both sides, we got that. Now if we do our trick, a times c is a negative 70. b is a negative 3. I need a p and a q. So let's see, 70, uh, 10 and 7, negative 10, positive 7. Multiply to give us negative 70, add to give us a negative 3. So I'll write this negative 3x is a negative 10x plus 7x. I'll factor 2x out, we got an x minus 5. Factor out of 7, I got an x minus 5 again. So I got a 2x and a 7, both multiplied by an x minus 5. Set our two factors equal to 0. This one tells us x is a negative 7 halves. This one tells us x is 5. So there's our two solutions to our equation. Any questions? All right, when solving a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula, how many and what kind of solutions do you get if the discriminant, the thing inside the square root, is positive? Well, here's our, here's our dude here, right? So let's just break this thing up. We got 2a and 2a. So we're looking at this in here, the discriminant. When b squared minus 4ac is positive. Well, you're going to get a positive and a negative square root of that positive number. Because that's positive in there, when that's positive, it's a real number. That tells you that the square root of it is a real number way they write that is like this. This is an element of the real numbers. 
and you got positive and negative. So two solutions, two real solutions. If it's negative, this dude on the inside is negative, well then you're gonna have plus or minus the square root of a negative number. So you still got two solutions, but if you got a negative number in there, you're gonna get an I, right? You get two imaginary solutions. Well, this would be imaginary, but all right, this would be an imaginary number, but you still got a real part over here, so I won't call them imaginary. I say complex solution. Being complex means there's a, a real and an imaginary part. And if it's zero, if this is zero, then this goes away and you're left with only that. Then you only have one real solution. It would have multiplicity too. So either you got something like this, two real solutions, you got something like this, uh, where there's no real solutions, or you got something like this, oops, where it's just touching. Create a quadratic equation that has these two solutions. There's a five and eight. There they are. If I plug in negative eight here, negative eight plus eight is zero, right? Zero times didn't matter what this is, is zero. If I plug a five in here, five minus five is zero. Zero times doesn't matter what that is, it's zero. So there's our quadratic equation. We can multiply it out, right? If you want x, then an 8x, and minus 5x, then minus 40, or x squared plus 3x minus 40 equals zero. However you want to write it, it's still all a quadratic equation that has these numbers as solutions. Um, any questions about that? No. All right. Create a quadratic equation that has imaginary solutions. All right. Let's say x is the most, the simplest imaginary number there is. Plus or minus i. All right, they said solutions, so I'm gonna pick two of them. There you go. Uh, and then I'll square both sides of the equation. So x squared is i squared, right? Or x squared is negative one. Or x squared plus one equals zero. That's one of them. The other way I could have done it is just been like, okay, x plus i and x minus i, right? If I plug a negative i in here, then this is zero. If I plug a positive i in here, then this one's zero. Of course, these are exactly the same equation, right? If I multiplied it out, x times x is an x squared minus i x plus i x minus i squared. 
those are the same. I squared is a negative one times a negative gives me a plus. Or I could do like x minus three i times an x plus two i. Just take an x and combine it with any imaginary number, right? This one has solutions, 3i and a negative 2i. So just write your factors down, right? When you have your factors, you can just look at it and tell what your solutions are. So if you have the solutions, you can write down the factors. So if we wanted this one, we could multiply it out. x times x is x squared. And we have plus 2xi minus 3xi. And a minus three times two is six i squared. So two xi minus three xi would be a minus x i, right? And then uh, i squared is a minus one times a minus is a positive, right? This one doesn't really work because we still got this guy in here. If we're going to have two imaginary solutions to a quadratic equation that doesn't have an imaginary number in it to start with, we kind of need to stick with a pair like this so, so that the, the I terms uh, cancel out. All right? Well, you can start off with X equals plus or minus any, any imaginary number you want that's how you get these terms to cancel. All right, let's see, what do we have here? Answer the following. Let's put this. How many x intercepts are shown? This is the x x axis. There are two. List them all. We have x equals negative two and positive two. Does the graph cross or bounce off of the x axis? Well, clearly it crosses it. How many x intercepts are shown? Three. We got one at negative three, negative one, and two. Does the graph cross or bounce off? Well, it crosses at each, each time, right? What that tells us is this, the function for this uh, graph here would be an x plus three times an x plus one times an x minus two. Right, these are where it crosses. That's where it's zero, right? So this would be my f of x. Because if I plug a negative three in here, I get zero. If I plug a negative one in here, I get zero. If I plug a two in here, I get zero. So this is the function. All right, this one over here would be x plus two times an x minus two. That's my f of x because if I plug a minus two in here, I get zero. If I plug a positive two in here, I get zero, all right? All right, this one. There's one x-intercept that's at negative four. 
All right, this thing is a quadratic, so it should have an x squared. It should have two solutions. Uh, it bounces off, though. So because it bounces off and we have this one solution, this is the function. All right, if I plug a negative 4 in, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. All right, this is negative 4, 0 at that point but it shows up twice, right? This is whenever you get one solution, right? But this thing is, it has an X squared. So there, it has a one solution, but it has what we call multiplicity two. Okay. Now this one, it doesn't have any it doesn't cross the x-intercepts. It has no x-intercepts, right? It has solutions, right? But if we found them, um, we'd find that they'd be uh, imaginary. It does, doesn't cross or bounce, right? So not applicable, right? All right, solve by factoring. All right, let's do our trick again. Our A times C is a negative six. B is a negative five. So let's find our P and our Q. Uh, so multiply to give us negative six. That add to give us negative five. It's negative six and one will work. So we'll rewrite this: two x squared minus six x plus x minus three. So I factor two x out of the first two terms. I get an x minus three, and I'll rewrite that as a one times x minus three. I got a 2x and a 1, both being multiplied by an x minus 3. So either 2x plus 1 is 0 or an x minus 3 is 0. So either x is negative 1 half or x is 3. There's our two solutions. I right, work backwards. Let's write a quadratic equation in factored form with the given solutions. All right, they've added two to both sides. Um, I have to subtract nine from both sides. Uh, so if these are both equal to zero, I have x plus two and it times an x minus nine. All right, if those are the two solutions, my factors is x minus each solution. This minus minus turns into a plus. All right, if I plug a negative two in for x, I get zero there. Right. Write a quadratic equation in factored form with the given solutions. Uh, let's see, x plus 3 and x minus 8. All right, if I put a not minus 3 in there, I would get 0. If I put an 8 in there, I would get 0. So I can multiply this out, x squared 
minus 8x plus 3x minus 24. Negative 8x plus 3x is a negative 5x. So those are the same thing, right? So okay, the equation, though, they want us to be setting this equal to 0, right, where these are the solutions. Number 8. 0 and 5, so how about x minus 0 and x minus 5? That equation has those solutions. Of course, we can rewrite it, get rid of the 0. If we multiply this x in, we got x squared minus 5x equals 0. So these are the solutions to this equation. Number nine here, x minus four times x plus seven tenths equals zero. All right, if I plug that into here, I get zero. If I plug that into there, I get zero. If you want, you can multiply it out. x times x is x squared plus seven tenths x minus four x. Minus 4 times 7 is 28 tenths. So if I want to combine these, I better multiply this by a 10 over 10. So I got x squared. I got 40 tenths. And 7 tenths is 40. Dang it. 47 tenths x minus 28 tenths. Uh, I don't think I can do anything with 47 tenths. But I can reduce 28 tenths. Uh, be 14 over 5. I like this version of it better than this. In fact, this one's ugly. What I do is multiply both sides by 10. So how about a 10x squared plus 47x minus 28? There you go. That one doesn't have any fractions in it at all. So... That's my most preferable quadratic equation with these numbers as solutions. X equals two and X equals two. How about that? There you go. It's the same thing as X minus two squared or x times x is x squared, negative 2x and a negative 2x, negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4. There you go. How about that? If I plug a 2 in, I get 0. I get 0 squared, actually. x minus two thirds and x plus one half. All right? If I put a minus half in here, I get a zero. So if I wanted to um, to mul multiply this out, I got x times x, x squared plus a half of x minus two-thirds x 
minus uh, two sixth and I'm just going to multiply both sides by a six. So I got six x squared. That six over two is three. Six times two is 12 divided by three is four. And the six times two six is just two. Or six x squared, three x minus four x is a negative x. But these are the solutions to this equation. I know that because I started off by writing the factors down. All right. X plus four. So if I put a minus four in there, I get zero. And an X minus three fifths. So if I put a three fifths in there, I get zero. All right. Um, X times X, X squared minus three fifths X plus a four X minus 12 fifths. I multiply both sides by five. I got a 5x squared minus 3x plus 20x minus 12. 5x squared, this gives me 17x. There it is in standard form. One fifty-five. All right, I think uh, so. We got ten more minutes. All right, let's see what we can do here. All right, for each graph below, answer the following: How many real roots are shown in the graph? All right. This one has three. Actually, since it touches here, uh, four, right? When it crosses, that's whenever you get a, you get a solution that has multiplicity one. When it touches, it has multiplicity two. Like if you have x squared equals zero, uh, you're getting zero, but you're getting it twice. So uh, I'm not sure what they want here. I'd say four. One, two here, and one there. So uh, here we go. They want to talk about the degree. All right, so we're going to say this is three real roots. All right. But this, since this one is touching, right, it has a multiplicity of two. So the degree of this polynomial would be one, two, three, four, would have fourth degree. That means there's gonna be an X to the fourth in it, all right? This one over here, this one's also fourth degree. Every one of these, it's just crossing, right? So actually this, this guy right here is X minus one times X minus two times X minus three times an X minus four. That's this function. If you multiply it all together, you're gonna to get an X to the fourth. All right, this one over here though, zero is a solution, right? Uh, intercept one here but since it's touching that means it's it shows up twice and then we got an x minus two so notice we still have a fourth degree these are both fourth degree so with minimum degree these are our two uh functions
with their minimum degree, right? I just did X minus each of the solutions, multiply them all together. This one, because it was touching, I wrote it twice. Okay. All right, um, so this thing is touching at negative two. So if I put a negative two in there, I get zero. And then we got also at zero, so x minus zero. So x times x plus two, or x squared plus two x. It looks about right. All right, over here where X is positive, it goes up. If I plug in a positive number in for X and let X get bigger, that's just gonna keep getting bigger. Okay, so. But no, I'm not buying it. There should be a, because we're touching right here. Instead of just crossing, we need to put that one in twice. So if we multiplied all this out, we have our x here. We got an x squared plus 4x plus 4. If we multiplied that through, we have an x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x. That's the function for this, right? We got x minus 0 here. And then the x plus 2 twice because it's just touching. If you got something like that, that's an x squared. If you got something like that, that's an x cubed. If you got something like that, that's an x to the fourth. Every time you have add an x, you get one extra uh, curve in there. Does that make sense? This down. So let's see, this is minus one. This is about a minus half, right? So if I put x plus a half, if I put a minus half in for x, I get zero. Since that thing is just touching the x axis, I need to put this guy twice. Then it's crossing over here at three, so I need to put an x minus three. So this thing is third degree x x x right um, and that's what our function is Page 56, prepping for rational functions. Determine which, whether the fraction is zero or undefined. You cannot divide by zero. Zero divided by anything is zero. What is this guy? Four minus nine is five. Six minus six is zero. This is undefined. This guy is zero over negative six. This is zero, okay? You cannot divide by zero. All right, on that note, let's uh, do our exam. Call it the end of class. Exam number 18. I'm gonna go back. Back a little bit, let's see. Back to the basics. Find 18% of 56 and let's do
Mm. That was really long. Mm. Mm. Do a nice mixture problem for number two. All right, class, get your answers submitted by midnight tonight. Any questions? No, sir. No, sir. Do All we right. have to do the second one? Yeah, you have to do the second one. <laughs> okay. Hey, y'all want to see my baby girl? Yes. How yeah. is she yes. doing, sir? Yeah. Good. I'll go get her. Hold on a second. I'll turn off the screen sharing for a second. Right. Oh my gosh, she's got so oh. much hair. Yes, she does. There she is. Oh, she looks so beautiful. She is. <laughs> Hi. She looks all like you. <laughs> well, thank she you. really does. She does look exactly like you. <laughs> oh, God. Yep. She has a lot of hair. <laughs> yes, she does. Surprised she doesn't have a bow in it. No, she eats and poops. She's like she's supposed to. That's yeah. awesome. She's gorgeous. Well, thank you. All right. I'll put the screen sharing back on when I get back so you can get the problem written down. There you go, little girl. Back to mama. There you go.